you are using VS Code, right? I do. May I ask uh, what kind of uh, theming you're using? Wow, so I think I used the I used the default theme, um, but I use like a, a custom syntax highlighting. Um, I don't remember the one. Um, I also customize it using a custom font, um, which gives you ligatures. So like people who walk beside me, they ask, "Wow, you are programming <laughs> with literal arrows." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I'm not using ligature yet, but uh, I guess I need to get into it, maybe, or at least I should try see how it feels. Uh, Adi Osmani from the Chrome team has uh, published, has tweeted uh, a website uh, called DevFont where you can uh, select, so you can pick a VS Code theme and select between uh, 30 uh, coding font and you can compare them and you can uh, find the font that is right for you. So you can add some extra customization to your VS Code. I mean, we spend a lot of time in, in this uh, ID, so... Of course, it should, uh, you know, we should use colors and fonts that makes us uh, comfortable. So uh, Ligature, I'm, I'm definitely planning on, on trying that. So I did browse through the font list and there are a couple of uh, fonts which uh, I think are interesting. So you should, it sounds like you, you might be looking for some new extra customization, so you should definitely check it out and you like also you know if if your colleagues see something surprising and so on so maybe you find uh, an interesting font that might surprise your colleagues i don't know absolutely and i think if you have like a unique vs code team it's uh that's a real eye grabber in the programming community how many times have you answered the question what is your vs code team this is crazy, yes, indeed. Um, and now I have to put it in the video description because, I mean, I received this question, I mean, many times every week. And so my theme is a Paranite operator from a super uh, talented uh, developer and uh, designer, Olaou, uh, Ola, Olaoui, and who I think now works for Shopify, but he designed this theme, which I really love. And my audience seems to like it because they're always asking... Uh, uh, which theme I'm using. It's, uh, yeah. There is some themes, I don't know about you, but um, I see some themes where sometimes it's like the italic is very, it looks almost like handwritten and things like this. And I'm not, uh, I'm not a big fan. I really like when things are like nicely monospaced and if uh, the font is italic, not too strong. But uh, yeah, it looks like there is a, uh, you know, you whatever is your taste, you can find something. So that's that's exciting. Yeah, I feel like the default team in in VS Code they made like a quite stylish choice there. Um, that it's pretty good looking on some other IDEs like the the Chat Brains IDEs. I feel like the the default team <laughs> there you could customize a lot because it doesn't look as good as VS Code. Mm -hmm. May I ask, uh, since when you're using VS Code and what were you using before? Well, before I used uh, Atom, I think. Yeah, same. I think, I don't know if the, maybe we went through the same experience, but uh, I used Atom also because somehow I was connected to Facebook and that was like the React ID kind of. And then when, I guess, 2018, mid-2018, when it was clear, that TypeScript will win the battle against Flow. Then I was looking for strong TypeScript support, and then obviously that's when I switched to VS Code. And then the product is so great that uh, for me it was a no-brainer to, to stick with it. Absolutely. There are so many details that I, I think give VS Code the advantage today and really subtle things that you, you notice that are not there in other editors. Mm -hmm. I I tried many different editors. Um, I think if you use like Sublime Text, that's st still awesome because it's so swift and you never have to wait. This this gives you kind of like the the sense of wow, I can do everything without ever having to having to stop. And I would consider going back to Sublime Text. It's uh, it's pretty good, and there's there are even some new um, IDEs for 
JavaScript developers coming up. One one thing that comes to mind is, for example, Nova from Panic, which seems Ooh. to be a native Mac app with mm-hmm. TypeScript support. Um, I w- I'm gonna give this a try at some point. All right, but does it have stories? If it doesn't have stories, <laughs> <laughs> well, not yet. So, I guess. VS Code is <laughs> but it's the only editor try. that has stories. If anything else, to take inspiration, if there are some... Uh, also, part of this uh, tweet from um, Adi Osmani is that I saw a couple of tweets from Adam Abramov and um, and some other influencer in the React community about TypeScript, auto-completions, and so on. And it's funny because now... So personally, I know I have, like, my auto-complete is, is great, but I don't know anymore where it's coming from. If it's coming from the TypeScript plugin, I use Cloud9, which gives, which gives uh, extremely smart uh, inferences. So now I'm not sure. And I think also people were have, have the same confusion where, you know, things get auto-imported, but we don't know anymore which plugin or specific plugin installed is auto-importing the thing. Uh, are you happy yourself with your setup? Or? Um, well, um, it's also a bit messy. So there's like different things, right? So there's like, the ESLint formatter, there's a prettier, there's prettier, and there's TypeScript, and they all try to do different stuff. There's also, like, of course, auto importing to some degree, and even ESLint can do that. And there's, like, automatic formatting on save. And, well, while ESLint tries to do its thing in prettier and TypeScript, um, it, it needs to happen in, in the right order. And right now I am in a state where uh, it kind of works well for me, but I tried to convert one of my coworkers to VS Code recently. From what? From, from, from WebStorm. I thought, okay. wow, it's going to be so easy. They were like complaining. But WebStorm is great, no, isn't it? It's also very good. I think, I don't know. I, one would think, I don't know. Well, I, I think WebStorm... It's really respectable. All my coworkers actually use WebStorm. The good oh. thing about WebStorm is that it's auto-importing and resolution of symbols is really fast um, compared to VS Code. Um, it often takes like one or two seconds until VS Code gives you the right suggestion what to import. So this is one of the things that uh, my coworker has missed uh, when they were using VS Code. On the other hand, what I don't like about WebStorm is that, besides the design, um, that it's pretty opinionated. It, you don't install like the prettier and the ESLint stuff um, yourself, but it's like built in into the mm-hmm. editor. So it's not really that upgradable. And, you know, like the editor has like a settings pane for ESLint built in mm. uh, with like 10 different options and you don't configure it in like an ESLint RC or how you would in in VS Code. And we struggled to uh, configure it so that it would behave the same across all of us. So it's not like you could put like a config file, like a .VS Code config file and... Uh, Oh, wow, okay, that's, yeah, if this yeah. use case is not supported, that's that's very bad. Yeah, and for example, I am used to that when I press command save, Prettier just does its thing, um, but until recently you had to configure that with WebStorm manually, and it would, would be like a pop-up of a progress bar. Wow, we are now formatting your file with Prettier. That seems to be... All right. Pretty noisy. What about uh, these AI powered? So I mentioned I'm using uh, Tab9. I'm super happy with it. Uh, the funny thing is that when I record my videos, because you can run some of the inference model uh, locally, uh, it takes a lot of uh, CPU usage. And so if I record a video, actually, I cannot uh, have it running at the same time. So I still get some... Uh, the completion is run on the cloud, so but I cannot run it locally anymore. But then if I'm not recording and I record and I run the inference locally, it's, you know, I, I'm not noticing uh, that the, there is, a, how do you say, a dip in performance. Uh, I saw, so uh, Jessica Shan, Coder Coder on, on YouTube, I saw that she's using also a similar product called Kite. 
Are you using one of these uh, tools? Or? No, actually, I tried it. Um, it seem, seem, I think I gave up before the AI was able to learn enough about me <laughs> um, because it would give me some... Uh, it would do some strange things for me. It must have been like some... Uh, must have been trained on a on a lot of engineers, and it doesn't yeah, really fit you. fit my style. <laughs> I'm sure that if we, I would like, was it, use it a lot time nine or another one? I think I used like this cloud nine or yeah. tab nine thing nine, yeah. that that used was recommended to me. Um, but I, then I think it would like interfere or like replace the suggestions that VS Code would give you, or at least yeah. it would display them on the top. And then I decided it was not for me. Okay. Maybe try it again because also I remember I had some uh, conflicting issues. So it was conflicting with a uh, TypeScript plugin in some cases. And I, it seems that uh, now it's fixed. So, okay. And we now that we're talking about VS Code, we should mention, I think, the core of VS Code was created here in Zurich, actually. Did you know that? Yes, I heard about it. That... Made in Zurich. Wow. Yeah, I, I follow like one of the engineers of VS Code on Twitter, Johannes Rieken. Ah, yeah. Um, wow. I used what, what to I... live in uh, the same student housing than him like a long time ago. No way. <laughs> <laughs> the world is so small. Yes, small city for sure. Uh, yeah. Good on them because I think they've been working on this. I mean, no, I'm sure it's such a big project. It's It spans outside uh, uh, this core team, but... And I'm not sure about the details of, but I, I, so for sure it was, the project was funded more than 10 years ago. And I remember 2010, it was all about Cloud9 and um, you were not talking about, uh, oh, in terms of, you know, be, uh, running an uh, IDE in the, in the browser. Uh, and I think VS Code started to appear on the map four, five years ago. And since three, four years, it's now it's like the number one, it's exploding. So yeah, I mean, good. For, I mean, what a great success! And also, it shows you know perseverance, like because I think they've been around for uh, for a long time, and now it's like uh, an incredible uh, project. And also, you know, when you have this ten years project, also you, I feel like you go through this uh, uh, technology shift in terms of uh, the web and rich web apps. Ten years ago, were quite different the capabilities, and also running desktop apps which are web built with web technologies. You know, I guess if you, I don't know, if you persist and you manage also maybe to find when there is this new technology shift, the right wave to surf on or the right technology to leverage, that can be uh, just, I just find it interesting too. Yeah, they did an absolutely amazing job. If you, like the best editor that uses these uh, web capabilities, I mean, you have to think about it that this thing is actually written in JavaScript. Could I ever build something so huge, so sophisticated in JavaScript, run as bug-free and as fast? Mm. Pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean, that's also exactly like you said, part of their success is that it's super stable, it's super lightweight, it just works. And at the end, yeah, incredible. But uh, yeah, so definitely some Swiss quality in there. <laughs> definitely. Well done. Well done.